Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Murfreesboro Mud Monster. In 1973, a young couple went for a romantic drive near the town of Murfreesboro, Illinois. They parked up by the river. Later on, they heard a piercing roar, which they described as sounding like an eagle shrieking into a microphone. They quickly turned off the radio and scanned the area. Another horrific shriek came and the bush in front of them shook. They turned on the car lights to see a creature that would forever be burned into their memories. It was massive, wet, hairy and covered in mud. Its skin was almost translucent as if it was an albino. For the next two weeks it terrorized people in the town. Reports of the seven foot tall swamp monster kept increasing until one day it just disappeared. After that there have only been a few more reports of the Murfreesboro mud monster since. At the time the local police chief said a lot of things in life are unexplained and this is another one. We don't know what the creature is but we do believe what these people saw was real. Moving on to number nine now we have the Little People's Village. In the woods of Connecticut near the town of Middlebury you can find the Little People's Village. Crumbling remains of tiny houses and structures that locals say were built for fairies. The story goes that many years ago a man and his wife were living peacefully in Middlebury when she started seeing small fairy folk in the woods around their home. She demanded that her husband build them a tiny village and so that's exactly what he did. Using real concrete and mortar he built the fairies these tiny houses complete with walkways and streets. As the village grew he suffered a price. People say that he began to hear the fairies voices in his head which eventually drove him to madness and then suicide. Now they say the crumbling ruins of the little people's village is haunted by the spirits of them or even the ghosts of the people they drove insane. You can still visit the ruins today and even sit in the throne that was carved at the request of the king of the little people. However, legend says the seat is now cursed and that if you sit in it you will be dead within seven years. Locals will show you how to get to the village of the little people but many also warn that if you linger there too long you will hear the voices of the little people and you too will be plunged into insanity. Next up at number eight now we have the Kushtaka. These are mythical shape-shifting creatures found in the stories of Native Americans in southeastern Alaska. The name roughly translates to land otter man. The story says that these creatures will shift between the human form and the otter form at will. They are cruel creatures who take pleasure in tricking sailors to their deaths. If they're not at sea they live in rivers and deploy a very creepy tactic to attract their prey. The Kushtaka are said to imitate the cries of a human baby or the screams of a woman in order to lure the victims to the river. Once there the Kushtaka either kill the person by tearing them to shreds or turn them into a Kushtaka themselves. Legend says that they can be warded off by using copper, urine, dogs or fire. Some stories do tell of benevolent Kushtaka who will help people but many feel it's simply not worth the risk to approach them if they ever do hear its cries in the Alaskan forest. Next up on number seven now we have the Spectre Moose. In Maine people have been spotting a particular moose for over a hundred years. This one stands out though as they say it's spectral, a ghost moose if you will. It's also huge standing some 10 to 15 feet high. It was first seen in the early 1900s when locals described it as a huge moose with a ghostly dirty white color and an enormous set of antlers. The coat of the animal is sometimes described as glowing faintly. The spectre moose was said to have an extremely acute sense of smell and hearing as well as the ability to appear or disappear at will and to phase through solid objects. Hunters who came across it said they could never line up properly for a shot as the moose would just blink in and out of existence before their very eyes. In 1938 a hunter said he saw it standing among a herd of other moose. Mises not sure. It was stood with two other large males but it made them look like dwarfs. He would have thought it was just a normal humongous moose if it wasn't for the strange white glow around its body. Moving on to number six now we have Betty Grease. In Michigan on the beaches of Lake Superior is a place where the sand is said to sing. Local legend says that a musical voice emanates from the sand, the voice of a Native American maid who lost her love to the Great Lakes and still calls to him from the shore when visitors play the sand. How exactly do you play the sand? Well they say the sand can be made to sing by pressing down on it with the palm of your hand or a piece of bark. It loses its magical properties though when removed from the beach. I wasn't too sure what to make of this one at first but I've seen a few videos on YouTube now and it definitely makes a very strange noise. Perhaps you guys check it out and see what you make of it.
Next up at number five now, we have the hauntings at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. This historic hotel is over 90 years old and has hosted some of the biggest stars in Hollywood over the years. The 12 story high building has 300 guest rooms and 63 suites, some of which are said to be haunted. Two of the ghosts are actually famous ghosts. Montgomery Clift is said to haunt room 928, the room he stayed in while filming From Here to Eternity. People say he moves around the occupant's luggage, while others have said they've seen him in the hallways rehearsing lines for his movie or playing the trumpet. The other celebrity haunting is someone a lot more famous, Marilyn Monroe. She is said to haunt the full length mirror that was once in her suite. Since she stayed in the hotel, the mirror has been relocated from her room, but the hauntings still follow it. People report seeing the ghostly apparition of Marilyn standing over their shoulder. Some people might like that, definitely not me. Moving on to number four now, we have the bus to nowhere. This one comes from Pennsylvania. Some say that this state is home to a bus that goes nowhere. It picks up hopeless people and keeps Keeps them on it forever, unless they are able to shake out of its trance. The bus is said to have no displays, no route number, and no destination. It only stops for people who want to leave where they are, but have no destination in mind. Philadelphians often say they've seen it winding through the city streets. Some people also call it the wandering bus, or simply zero. People say that once you're on the bus, you sit, like everyone else, staring out of the window, wrapped in your own thoughts, desperate to get away from whatever pain and despair is in your life. You can pull the cord any time when you're ready to disembark, but be warned. Legend says that time does not move the same on the bus to nowhere. Your trip could have lasted minutes, days, months, or in some cases, years. The only silver lining is that when the passengers finally do disembark, they find themselves exactly where they're supposed to be. Next up at number three now, we have the Snallygaster. This is a mythical dragon-like beast said to inhabit central Maryland. It was first described by German immigrants who called it the Schnellergaster which translates to quick ghost. It's been described as being half bird, half reptile, and with a strange metallic beak lined with razor sharp teeth. Some even say it has octopus-like tentacles. It swoops down silently from the sky and carries its human victims off to its den, where it then sucks them dry of blood. Newspaper reports from February and March 1909 describe encounters between local residents and a beast with enormous wings, a long pointed bill, claws like steel hooks, and an eye in the center of its its forehead. They said its screech sounded like a locomotive whistle. Now, other than the humans it hunts, the Snallygaster is also said to have one mortal enemy, the Deweyo. The Deweyo is reported to be a mammalian biped that looks like a wolf but stands like a human. It's been reported all over Maryland, and locals have said they've seen vicious battles between the two creatures. Moving on to number two now, we have Hoggin Molly. You might think her name sounds quite nice. Everyone needs a hug from time to time. Probably not from Molly. Generations of people from Alabama have grown up with this very creepy legend. They said Molly is a giant ghost, at least seven feet tall, who wanders the streets of Abbeville, Alabama. Late at night, she can be seen dragging her long black skirt as she goes. If you see her, run, because if she sees you, she will chase you and she will get you. Once she does, she picks you up with her huge arms and gives you the tightest hug of your life while screaming in your ear. They say the horrible sound she makes never leaves you. There have been no reports of hugging Molly ever killing someone, but her attacks are enough to strike fear into the hearts of everyone around. And finally, number one, we have the Carter Brothers. In New Orleans in the 1930s, a young girl ran into a police station begging for help. She said that two local businessmen, John and Wayne Carter have been keeping her hostage and feeding off her blood. She showed them the cuts on her wrist, not quite enough to kill her, but just enough to extract blood from. The police rushed to the apartment to find four other women tied to chairs with their wrists slit in a similar fashion. In another room, they also found 12 bodies that had been drained of their blood. The police staked the place out and waited for the men to return. When they did, it took eight police officers to hold them down and restrain them. Their strength seemed superhuman. The pair were executed for their crimes and buried in a sealed tomb. Years later, another member of the Carter family died. They opened up the tomb to lay them to rest and found that the bodies of John and Wayne Carter were gone. No remains, no clothes, no trace that they have ever been there at all. New Orleans became gripped with the legend of these vampire brothers who could escape death itself. To this day, many sightings of the brothers have still been reported, especially around the apartment building that they once called home. Or perhaps they still do. They've just learned their lesson to keep things more hidden. Number 10 now, we have the skunk ape. 
No, that's not my nickname. This is actually one of the most famous mysterious creatures said to wander from Florida to North Carolina and even Arkansas. As you guys might expect from the skunk part of the name, this thing doesn't smell great. Ever since the first sightings of it in the 1960s, people have mentioned the horrific smell of this thing. Often you can smell it before even seeing it. When you finally do, it looks like an ape, big, hairy, and running on two legs. For some people, the skunk ape isn't just a rumor, it's a reality. Dave Sheely is the man who established the official skunk ape research headquarters. He said there is not only one or two, but nine of these creatures living in the Florida Everglades alone. He spent most of his life trying to document them. According to Sheely, the average male skunk ape stands six to seven feet tall and weighs roughly 450 pounds. Females are five to six feet tall and weighing in at about 250 pounds. Moving on to number nine now, we have Charman. Ohio's Camp Comfort County Park is a picturesque place in California. It's also known for being home to many creepy spirits. There's a ghost of a bride wearing a bloody wedding dress, a woman on a horse reenacting her own death for eternity, and even a headless motorcyclist. However, none are as terrifying or as famous as Charman. Ever since a fire in 1948 killed a number of people there, there have been reports of this hideous figure wandering the area. He's said to have skin burnt to a crisp and noxious fumes pouring out of him. Some people go even further and say that this creature isn't even human at all. They say Charman is a beast, an entity that has visited people a number of times, and it always goes the same way. They say their homes are engulfed in thick black fumes that send them to sleep. Just before losing consciousness, they see Charman walking towards them. When they wake up, there will be a small fire nearby, a reminder that Charman has paid a visit. Next up at number eight now, we have Turnbull Canyon. They say death awaits everyone at Turnbull Canyon. Located in Whittier, California, the canyon is known as a pretty dangerous place, as it is thanks to the mountain lions and rattlesnakes that call it home. Some people believe that the most dangerous thing there though is the paranormal activity. It's said that the Gabrielino Native Americans called this place the place of the devil. The Spanish killed many of them who refused to convert to Catholicism. Some say their tortured souls now haunt the canyon. Then in the 19th century, members of the tribe who worked in the area reported seeing ghosts and witches in burial grounds there. The sightings became more frequent and reports started of there being a satanic cult that had taken root in the canyon. They were supposedly sacrificing children from a nearby orphanage. When locals got wind of what was happening, the cult disappeared overnight, but the reports of ghosts, creatures, and hooded figures still appear from time to time. Moving on to number seven now, we have the Night Watchers. We're moving over to Hawaii now for this one. We all know it looks like paradise, but as we've seen in our last few videos, it's no stranger to some creepy urban legends. One of them is the Night Marchers. Locals say they are ghostly apparitions that can be seen walking in formation at night, never stopping, always facing forward, and there is always a sound of a beating drum echoing out in the silence of the night. Hawaiians say they are armed spirit warriors en route to a battle. They carry old weapons and are clothed in decorated helmets and cloaks. The next question is naturally, why do they appear? Well, some say they are restless souls looking to reclaim rightful territory or replay a battle gone wrong, hoping this time they can do it right. Or perhaps it's a simple ghost tale of avenging their own deaths. The creepiest theory I heard though is that they're searching for an entrance to the next world. Instead of just wandering aimlessly for it like other ghosts, they do it how a soldier knows best, in a focused, methodical manner. There are signs that the night marchers are out on the Hawaiian Islands. They are recognized by their raised torches and repeated chants. Sometimes footprints have been found, even though the night marchers are said to float a few inches off the ground. Moving on to number six now, we have the Voodoo Queen. Louisiana is a place steeped in voodoo history. For people in New Orleans, few stories rival that of Voodoo Queen Marie Laveau. She was said to be a prestigious woman who worked as a hairdresser in the city. She chatted to every customer she had, not just for the sake of it, but to get information. Eventually, she learned the secrets of everyone in the city, man and woman, rich and poor. Poor. She used this information to manipulate her enemies through voodoo. It's said she gained the power of immortality from a demonic force known by the name of Papa Legba. She wanted to do this so that she could kill innocent beings and seek revenge on those who had wronged her. Others say that she never murdered anyone and used her voodoo skills to unite people. She also blended Catholicism and voodoo to form a religion that is still practiced in the area today. She died in 1881 at the age of 87, but the story did not end there. According to local legend, she returned to life once a year on St. John's Eve to lead the faithful in worship. If you're ever in New Orleans on that night, don't be surprised if you see a ghost of the voodoo queen looking for her followers. Moving on to number five now, we have the Rougarou. We're staying in Louisiana now for this one. The Rougarou is a werewolf creature 
that has been sighted across French Louisiana for centuries. The creature is said to have all the familiar tropes of a werewolf, huge, leering, covered in fur and ready to tear any human to shreds. It differs from a classic werewolf though in that the Rougarou is said to have a genetic disorder rather than catching its disease from someone else or being cursed into it by a witch. A Rougarou is a totally normal person until one day when their condition is just turned on. Their body is enlarged and they develop an insatiable craving for raw meat. They will remain in this painful state until they complete their transformation and there's only one way to do that, to take a bite of human flesh. Those who have seen a Rougarou describe it as huge, standing between 7 to 8 feet tall with massive sharp teeth and deep glowing red eyes. It becomes its animal form on the night of a full moon. For many people, the Rougarou is far scarier than a typical werewolf because the person doesn't even know they are one until it's far too late. It could be your friend, your family member, it could be me, or it could even be you. Next up at number 4 now, we have the Skinwalkers. In traditional Navajo culture, the Skinwalker is a witchcraft practitioner who wears the skins of various animals. A Skinwalker can morph into a number of different creatures, including coyotes, wolves, bears, crows, and owls. In the past century or so, those outside of the Navajo people have also reported seeing Skinwalkers. They've been described as half-human monstrosities who run on two legs at insanely fast speeds. One woman claimed that a skinwalker appeared on a Navajo reservation land. It ran alongside her car at 60 miles per hour, darted in front and then disappeared into the night. They are often said to let out a screeching howl of laughter as they run circles around terrified people. Sightings like this have led many people to become interested in skinwalkers and want to interview Navajo tribes people to find out more about them. The problem is, there is a deep superstition among the Navajo people when it comes to talking about skinwalkers. Many of the elders believe it's not good to talk or even hear about skinwalkers, otherwise you will attract them to you. Let's hope we don't do that after discussing them in this video. Next up at number 3 now we have Stow Lake. Stow Lake lies in Golden Gate Park in California. It's said to be home to a ghost that not only appears to visitors but can also be summoned by them. According to locals, the ghost of Stow Lake was a mother whose baby fell into the lake. Now They say that she can be summoned by standing on the edge of the lake and saying exactly these words. White lady, white lady, I have your baby. You will have to repeat it three times and then she will appear. The best place to do this is said to be next to the Pioneer Women and Children statue. That in itself is said to be quite a spooky statue as it changes expressions at night. If she deems you worthy enough then she will appear to you and immediately ask you for her baby. If you say that you have the baby, she will haunt you until the day you die. If you say you don't, she'll drag you down to the lake herself. Coming at number 2 now we have the Legend of Chloe. This is said to be the ghost of a girl that haunts Myrtle's plantation in LA. One day a teacher took a picture with one of her students on a field trip there. It has since become famous among the paranormal community. Behind them there appears to be the ghost of a girl standing in the window. She appears to be looking directly into the camera. The owners say this is Chloe and it's not the first time that she's been seen. The picture was sent to the Society of Physical Research in England, founded in 1882, claimed to be the oldest and most prestigious paranormal research group in the world. They found nobody had tampered with or edited the photograph, leading to many people saying this is proof of Chloe's existence. The photograph has now been sent around the whole world, always with a request for an explanation, but so far none have emerged. And finally number 1 now we have the Devil Man of Algiers. We're returning again to Louisiana for this one. Algiers is the oldest neighborhood in New Orleans. This story dates back to 1938 when reports of a man terrorizing couples spread around the city. When asked to describe the man, some details were disputed, but one thing everyone agreed on was that this man was undoubtedly, categorically, the devil. He was described as having eyes like a chicken, with bright pink star shaped ears and long black horns. He also rode on thin air and shape shifted while announcing himself as the devil. The most common reports involved him terrorizing bars, attacking women and appearing before local couples. People who saw the devil man say they always felt a sense of oncoming death or dread, that they even saw their lives flash before their very eyes. Perhaps the most scary story comes from a young couple. They said as they were travelling home one evening, a strange person tried to 
to stop their car. They slowed the car and asked what he wanted. He asked for a ride to a nearby town. The couple felt uncomfortable though and so they politely declined. Later as they drove down the highway they saw the same man walking along the side of the road. They drove past him but after just 10 minutes there he was again walking by the side of the road. Again he asked them to stop and requested a ride and again they refused. When they saw him again he changed into the devil before their own eyes. They sped off again and then there he was, this time riding a brown horse. They rushed to tell the police who went to investigate. The police saw him and requested that he stops. When he didn't they fired shots into him. He jumped off the horse and sprayed the bullets back at them laughing and rubbing his hairy hands together. He was brought to jail where he quickly slipped out of his cell and into New Orleans legends. Coming up at number 10 now we have the grunge. This one comes from Louisiana. In the early days of New Orleans there was a road called Grunch Road that went deep into the swampy woods before coming to a dead end. That is where the grunge people lived. A strange hybrid of albinos and dwarves forced away from society and made to live in their own community. As the years went by people started to doubt the story's authenticity but it sparked up again when people started disappearing down Grunch Road. Nearby farmers reported their animals missing or finding them dead and drained of blood. Many locals now refuse to head down Grunch Road for fear of meeting the same fate. Moving on to number 9 now we have Stull Cemetery. To those that know the story, Stull Cemetery in Kansas is better known as the doorway to hell. Legend says that the devil himself chose the cemetery as his entrance from the underworld to our own. Now it's said that a tree once stood in the cemetery and an old tombstone there was inscribed with the word witch. The tree was used to hang condemned witches back in the day who were put to death by the locals. The tombstone apparently marks the burial spot of Satan's own child, a creature born deformed and covered in wolf hair. In modern times the legend has continued with reports of the ground catching fire in random spots. Pope John Paul II was said to divert his private plane around the cemetery because it was so tainted by evil. Now whether or not you believe all of that there's plenty of videos on YouTube to check out if you're interested and I find them quite creepy. Moving on to number 8 now we have Knock Knock Road. This one is for all of you guys watching that get very creeped out by little girl ghosts. I think they're the worst kind of ghost. Strasbourg Road near Detroit has a disturbing tale of murder attached to it. Legend says that a little girl was killed on the road in the 1940s by a hit and run driver. Ever since then people have reported the same story. They stop at a traffic light and see on the side of the road a young girl standing, just standing and staring right into your car. Whether they freeze or then try to speak to her she slowly walks forward to the car and stares at you with deep set hollow eyes. She scans your face to try and find her killer and get her revenge. I guess you better hope you just don't look like the killer. At number 7 now we have the char man. This story goes that in 1948 a wildfire swept across Ojaji, California. The flames consumed a cabin where a man lived with his son. He was burned alive but the son survived, just barely though. When the authorities arrived they found a shocking scene. The father had been flayed alive. His skin had been removed from his body and peeled off. His body was just hanging from a nearby tree. The police then searched for the perpetrator. They heard a wheezing sound from a nearby bush and then suddenly the son just bolted out of it. The overpowering smell of him stunned the officers and in that moment the boy ran into the trees and then escaped into the hills. In the years since then many locals have said they've seen the char man in the woods horribly disfigured by his burns and tormented by his past. He's said to creep up on the tents of innocent campers in the hills waiting for them to fall asleep. Coming at number 6 now we have Hell's Gate Bridge. This one comes from Oxford, Alabama. The story goes that in the 1950s a young couple crashed their car off the side of this bridge and drowned. Now some locals believe you cross the bridge at your own peril. One story is that if you drive your car out to the middle of the bridge and then turn off all the lights the couple will appear in your car just sitting behind you. When you turn around they'll be gone leaving a wet seat behind. The other story is that if you drive over the bridge and then look over your shoulder about halfway through the scenery behind you turns into a portal to hell just spouting fire and flames. Now whether or not you believe all of this it's enough for some people to just look for a different way to cross the river. Moving on to number 5 now we have 100 Steps Cemetery. This is located in the town of Brazil in Indiana. Interesting name for a town and the cemetery is even more interesting. It's been used for at least 150 years and in that time it's gained quite a sinister reputation for a ghostly undertaker. The story goes that as you walk up the many steps to the top of the cemetery you must count each and every step. When you reach the top you must turn towards the open field and then the ghost of the cemetery's first undertaker will appear. Without saying anything 
He will then reveal your own death to you in a vision. Straight away you must proceed back down the steps and count each one again. If the number is different to the one that you counted on the way up, the vision was true. An added bonus is that if anyone tries to cheat and climb up or down without using the steps, a ghostly hand will push them to the ground, leaving a red imprint on their back for days as a mark of the devil. Definitely not a place to go for just a Sunday walk then. Next up at number four now we have the Goat Man of Pope Lick. I love my job because I get to say sentences like that. This is an old Kentucky urban legend about a hideous being who roams the woods across that state. Those who have seen him describe the Goat Man as having dark fur, pale skin, goat legs and twisted horns. Some people say he was an escaped circus freak, others say he was a farmer who tortured goats for Satan. Satan then repaid him by turning him into a tortured goat himself. The Goat Man is said to hide under the rusty bridge that crosses Pope Lick Creek in Louisville. Legend says he lures people onto the train tracks there and then takes pleasure in them being hit by oncoming trains. Please don't go looking for this one though guys. In 2016 a woman actually fell to her death from the bridge while looking for the Goat Man. And at the three now we have Slaughterhouse Canyon. With a name like that you know it's not going to be a pretty story. During the 1800s gold rush a family lived in the canyon there in a little wooden shack. Every day was the same. The husband would set off into the mountains to search for gold and food for his family. Then one day he just didn't come back. Presumably injured or killed by animals, the mountain or even other humans. His wife waited for her husband for weeks until the whole family began to starve. Driven mad with the hunger and her children's cries, she put on her wedding dress, picked up a knife and murdered her children, throwing them into the river and then weeping until starvation killed her too. Legend says that if you visit the canyon today, you can still hear the mother's painful cries. Alright next up at number 2 now we have the Black Angel. This statue looks very creepy as it is. An old, worn, corroded angel staring down over Oakland Cemetery in Iowa City. Her sinister appearance has helped spawn a number of different legends around her. One of them says that a pregnant woman should never walk under her lest they want to lose their unborn child. Another says that if you kiss or perhaps even just touch the statue, you'll be dead within six months. This is the kind of story that scares everyone off. Whether or not you believe in curses, it's just not even worth thinking about. And finally number one now we have Cropsey. Many New Yorkers know the story of Cropsey, the boogeyman of Staten Island. Legend says that he was an escaped patient from a mental asylum who went on a murderous rampage. He had a hook for a hand which he would then use to drag children back to the abandoned ruins of Seaview Hospital. Pretty creepy stuff, but here's where it gets really scary. Many parents would tell this story to their kids to scare them into being cautious about strangers even if they didn't really believe the story themselves. But then in the 1970s a real killer called Andre Rand really did start hunting children in a very similar way. Was he using the Cropsey legend as cover? Either way, people now take the legend a lot more seriously. Mm -hmm.